Yo, what's good with y'all? It's Key Major, and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make some dark, real, ethnic samples like Q Beats for Southside. This sample is gonna be in my new free kit dropping very soon. It's gonna be my next video that I'm gonna be uploading. It's a free sample pack with 40 plus samples, plus a bonus drum kit and a bonus one shot kit. So, yeah, make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified when I drop the kit. With that being said, let's get straight to the video. So, I first started this sample with this starter by my boy Sopal. So it really helped capture that ethnic feel. It has a lot of real instruments in it. Dark, ethnic, Q beats type of vibe. So I wanted to go with that by adding my own real instruments, vocals, guitars, etc. So I first laid down these vocals right here. understand a lot of you guys just take vocal samples from the internet or splice but i really recommend recording your own vocal samples because it allows you to have much more freedom and get the exact vocal sample that you want and hit the right notes and stuff but i'm gonna give you guys a bunch of tips and tricks that i use and a lot of people have told me work when it comes to recording vocal samples so the first things first is recording small takes as you can see i did not record one big take it's a bunch of small layers and this helps you focus on one specific part to kind of finalize it make it perfect if you do one big take it's going to be very sloppy and there's probably gonna be a lot of mistakes in between the second tip is using the fade in tool which when you're using these waves at the end you could drag in the fade in or fade out knob if you do not have that go up to this wave and select show fade editing controls or just do shift f and then you'll be able to use this knob this is useful for many reasons first if you have any clicking or popping you could just drag it in to kind of take it out but the biggest thing that i like to use it for is for blending in vocal samples so that's what i did right here i have two vocal samples laying on top of each other where i'm hitting two different notes and both of them together sounded pretty decent but i wanted to fade it in to make it just sound a lot more smooth and transition more better the next tip is a big one that i hear a lot of people say that really really helped me get better at vocal samples first is lowering the bpm so this bpm is at 110 but i recorded these vocals at around 80 so i did tone it down by a lot and what this does is it's a lot slower so it helps you hit the notes exactly where you want them because you have more time and then when you speed it back up to the original bpm obviously shortens and speeds up the recording so when that happens it hides and it covers a lot of the little mistakes and a lot of the little tweaks that you've done there's a specific term for this i forgot what it's called if i remember i'll put it on the screen right now another thing is just pitching down the whole beat or sample if you're struggling to hit the notes and you're struggling to kind of reach a high octave just lower down the pitch and it'll be a lot easier to hit the notes also once you record it at a lower pitch and then you pitch it back up it's going to make it sound more like a female or a kid type of choir and it'll just kind of change your voice and makes it sound a little better the last tip i got is using the stretch pro so a lot of people don't really use this but i always use this in my vocal samples it helps kind of clean the sample and cut out some of the harsh highs like i said earlier pitching it back up will make it sound a lot more like a female or a kid but it's gonna give it a lot of these harsh highs so using the stretch pro and i put it down to negative 200 i usually do negative 200 and negative 100 always kind of cleans out those highs and makes it sound a lot more clean so with these vocal samples i first started by just recording basic takes and and then what I would do is I would record the same thing, but just uh, at a higher octave. So I'm just hitting the same notes, just at a higher octave, and this is just layering the whole sample. And another thing I did, I think it's called harmonizing. I'm not too sure with the actual musical terms and stuff, but and I did the same thing with this last two over here. So right here, I'm hitting completely different notes, but I'm harmonizing them on top of the original melody. And it just makes it sound 10 times better and more full. As far as the effects, all I had was M auto pitch, completely free. Next, I rendered this out into this recording right here. This is when I did the Stretch Pro. So I pitched it down by 200 cents. So 
So this kind of just lowered my voice, removed some of the highs. So later in the sample, when I would pitch it up, it still sounds kind of clean and not too harsh. For the effects on here, I decided a simple EQ, taking out a lot of the harsh frequencies. Everybody's voice is different. Your voice is gonna have its own harsh frequencies. For mine, it was basically just the bass and then some of the mids and high mids. Next, I recorded this guitar right here. So yeah, the guitar recording is pretty simple and it's very similar to recording vocals. All I do is a bunch of small takes. So that was basically the first take and that was the bass of the guitar. After that, I just added some kind of like counter melodies and top melodies to like spice up the melody. And then right here, I did a very similar trick with the vocals where I played the same notes, just at a higher octave. And like I said, that just helps layer on top of the guitar and make it sound a lot better. And then these last two recordings down here. The guitar sounds a little different because I used this type of like metal, whatever. I don't even know if it's metal. I have a picture on the screen right now of what it is. And then for the effects, I decided to EQ, lowering some of the low mids and bass, and then cutting out some of the highs to make it sound more vintage. I also made it a little bit more mono, and then I panned this one a little bit to the left since the vocals were panned to the right to kind of separate every sound for their own little spot. That was basically it. at the end. I just added a bass and a flute. So the bass is the classic Rickenbacker bass. I used the stock preset. I just clicked on the guitar and I turned the tone down for both of them. For this pattern, I just laid down the runo, which is D sharp, and then I added this little sequence right here to spice up the melody. All I did is I took my runo and then I pitched it down four notes, and then up an octave, and then in between, I added this little like staircase up to the melody. Copy this over, and it's the same thing, just added this extra note just to kind of make it a little more unique and not as repetitive. As far as the effects, I just raised the bass a little bit. And then lastly, I just added this flute lick, and then this is from TB Digital's Digital Instruments One Shot Kit. I went to the flute loops and I selected Wavy 05. It was perfect for that ethnic vibe. I raised it by 400 cents to put it in key and then I pitched it up an octave. I panned it to the left to give it its own little space in the final melody and I normalized it so it was a lot louder. And then I just did shift M to enable the stretch mode and I just grabbed the edge and I shortened it by a lot so it was a lot faster. I used the fade out tool to kind of just fade it out and blend it. Then lastly, I just automated the volume so it has this like sweeping effect so it's not just one static volume and it just makes it sound a lot more real. The biggest tip I could give when it comes to using real instruments or trying to replicate it with VSTs is actually studying real instruments. I really recommend to listen to a lot of samples with real instruments, old vintage ethnic samples, and study how they use it. So adding these little tweaks like just this simple automation really helps make it sound more realistic with the volume kind of sweeping down and then back up. Lastly on the master, I had the first EQ. The second EQ is just cleaning up the sample, lowering some of the harsh frequencies. Ozone imager just to make it sound a little more wide and lastly just a soft clipper making the sample a lot louder then i exported it into this wave and i chopped up the sample all i did is i chopped up the order so in the beginning i have this little section where it's just the starter and my vocals and then it goes into this whole part which i just showed you and then i export this whole thing into this which is the final sample <laughs> I have a couple VSTs on the screen right now to kind of replicate some vocals and guitar. These are the VSTs that I would use if I did not have real instruments and stuff. But yeah, this sample is gonna be in my new kit dropping very soon. It's gonna be the next video that I upload after this. It's 40 plus samples with me and a bunch of other very talented sample makers. Plus a bonus drum kit and a bonus one shot kit will be in the sample pack. If you guys missed the drop, just go to the first thing in the description, which is my website. I have a bunch of my kits on there. All of them are only $10 with a bunch of high quality sounds and my 
my free sample pack is going to be on there as well. Yeah, but I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any more videos. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next video.